Oh, okay. Well, you know what? We're live. We're doing this on YouTube. I'm Matt from the Primal Screen Podcast. We have Marita Frazee, because she's crazy, and that's the only way I can remember how to pronounce your last name. You know what? Whatever works for you. <laughs> At least you got Marita, and it's not Merida this time. That's right. I tried really hard. I it can took tell. me a couple weeks I can to tell. get over. I had screwed with myself mm, that months. night. All right. Maybe a couple months. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to be talking about uh, her business, which if you check her out on YouTube right now, you're looking at her and it says kazoo. And uh, I'm probably not the best person to describe what kazoo is. What is kazoo again? Really quickly. Yep. So what kazoo is is retention for professionals in Eastern Iowa. So if you've got a company and you're struggling to retain professionals, hook them up with me before they come to town. We do interspace tours, gift cards and tickets to events. Invite them to join the community and really help uh, help your retention rates. Is that your two? Is that like your one minute like elevator pitch? I think it changes every time. Every time you talk about it, it's different. Oh yeah. Because uh, we, I was talking to somebody and they asked me what my business was and I was going on and on and on. And he goes, that doesn't sound... All right, let's try this again. Mm-hmm. How about this? Was he coaching you? He was. He was donating his time. I thought, uh, really swell guy. Mm-hmm. Swell. He's a swell guy. <laughs> Steve He's Shriver. So Steve Shriver with yeah. Ecolips. Yep. Super swell guy. Uh, he goes, what about this? So and he I came get, up with something? He came up with something. So now... When I meet with somebody and they're like, so what do you do? Mm-hmm. I go, well, I create high uh, quality, low cost, professional commercials for people on their websites. Nice. Boom. See? <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. Uh, but tonight we will talk a little bit about your business, where mm-hmm. you were from the last podcast because you were going to, uh, what's that called again? So I was about to pitch, pitch. at the CBJ Entrepreneurial Forum. CBJ. Mm-hmm. All right. So what is the CBJ? So Corridor Business Journal. So if you drive on 380, you'll notice that on the east side of 380, closer to Coralville, there's a building being built. Mm -hmm. That's the new CBJ headquarters plug. Uh, (laughs) For them, they're not paying me, I promise. But anyway, so yeah, they they do all sorts of news stories in eastern Iowa, stuff that's going on in the state, business-related. I like to – there's a couple of guest columnists in there. They talk about – um, how to make sales, how to retain employees, anything that you can think of, like I said, related to business. I like to read it um, at the University of Iowa. I take some MBA classes. Well, of course you do. Because it's free. And so you're an I overachiever, can... lady. <laughs> you're, you're, you are an engineer, structural engineer, correct? Right. She works in a lab, everybody. So I have an update for you on that. What? Uh-huh. You're not going back down to Texas, are you? No. Okay. But I'm back full time as a manager. So half manager of an engineering team, half this thing called staffing focal. So now all of the retention initiatives that I really wanted to do for Rockwell. Yeah. Oh, I, don't are you are you oh, gonna promote? I, I you know what? Is this an Iowa thing? I'm, or is it a Cedar Rapids <laughs> thing? It's just you. It's not me. <laughs> <laughs> that guy. I'll never let it go. That Marita. guy. I'm like that chick on uh, Titanic. I'll never let you go. Yeah. With the guy with the beard. Anyway, if you want to know what we're talking about, check out the other episode. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if they kind of really caught wind of what I was doing and maybe they were worried I was going to leave or maybe they said, hey, we could use some more of this internally. Mm-hmm. Offered me this dream role. So now all those retention things I'm I can do internally now for Rockwell. So how does that affect Kazoo? So I'm more of the face, not yeah. necessarily the hands. So as business leaders say, "Yep, I really want these services." They mm-hmm. can reach out to me, reach out to me. <laughs> and I've got a slew of people that are just as passionate about this community as I am, and so those will be the people doing the interspace tours. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Uh, you know, with your new position, mm-hmm. you know, it kind of falls in line with that new position. What falls in line with my new position? Well, there's leadership and self-deception. Oh, here we go. You know what? <laughs> uh, that was, let me see. I'm looking for the author. It's the Arbinger Institute. I should have brought it. You could have. So, you could have brought it. I was introduced uh, to this book in one of those classes I was taking. Yeah. 
threw it out there in the last podcast. I'm excited to hear what you think you about challenged it. challenged us. I did. I threw down that gauntlet. And who picked it up? Who was the only one? You know what? That surprises me because I totally you, thought- I'm the bonehead. Uh, <laughs> that I'm- You're the athletic dumb guy. You're yeah. just you're the argumentative guy. Yeah, you're the you know bully your friend who's sensitive and upset and going right. through you know right. But you picked it up. I did. I was making sure that I was prepared for tonight. So you did a little homework. I did a little homework. I got the audio book because my life's too busy and um, the audio version unabridged um, worked out better for me. Okay. Okay. Do so you, what is the bridged version? The unabridged? I don't I don't know what the bridged version. The <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine that the bridged version and I apologize to everybody watching us live on YouTube right now. Um I've had to take over. If you didn't notice already, Todd's not here. Now Todd, we don't ever see Todd. We don't know who he is. I think he's on a special mission. For real? I, Does he know Batman? I don't know. You know, there's there's a man that I work with. <laughs> he likes to talk like Batman quite a bit. <laughs> so is he at home in his pajamas secretly tuning in to this podcast right now? Todd? Oh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, Todd? I No, or, or, or the Or his other. alter ego? His alter ego. I don't know. What I like to think of, because you are a very important person... And I value your time. Oh. I'd like to think well, that thanks. there was an act of national security, mm -hmm. and he had to be flown out to take care of something that was extremely important. That's what I choose to believe. Mm -hmm. And luckily for him, I tried to remove myself from the box. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get in the box? When Lady, you found I out? find myself in the box a lot. I bet you do. A lot. So, Which, and you could tell. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Uh, actually, well, we're, we're joking a little bit, but um, I did read, Marita did throw down the gauntlet. She did ask me to read uh, Leadership and Self-Deception, which I, like I said, I got the audiobook version. Let me just quickly uh, roll through the principles of this book, because we're going to kind of sum it up, and then I'd like to support some of the things that they talked about with some... Stories of my own, mm -hmm. and maybe you have some of your own. Mm -hmm. Do you actually use these, or has it like gone the way of the dodo for you? N not completely the way of the dodo, but I don't find myself thinking, shit, I'm, I'm in, the, in box. the box. Yeah. It would be kind of funny if you did. If, like, if from this point forward, you kind of, you go right, like you were in a funk, mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, shit. Matt would just laugh if he knew I was in the <laughs> box right now. And then I'll text you. I'm in the box. <laughs> you know you want me to now. Yeah. I mean, I, I expect periodically throughout the day, I'm in the box. We'll get the fuck out of the box. Done. Done. <laughs> <laughs> but here are the principles. Uh, you know, this is kind of a new way of describing an old adage, which is treat someone uh, uh, the way you want to be treated somewhat, mm -hmm. right? Because as soon as you start to judge somebody, as soon as, you, as soon as you start to look at them as if they're not a person. Mm -hmm. An object. An object. Mm -hmm. That's basically, you've put yourself in this, what they this book calls the box. Um, but these are the principles, and we'll talk about them. Principle number one, an act contrary to what I feel I should do for another. So the example from the book is... The author is laying there in bed. The baby's crying. He mm -hmm. thinks to himself, you know, I should get up. I should get up and get the baby so my wife can sleep. Mm -hmm. But then he chooses not to. And at that moment when he chooses not to, he falls into, that's the first, the first principle. He's choosing not to. So uh, then he falls into this thing where they say they've betrayed themselves. Mm -hmm. Now, it, it gets really... That, that part's that point, a little hokey. Come on, really? Did you betray yourself? Right. The justification part, though, is totally real. For sure. Yeah. For sure real. Uh, so uh, when I betray my... This is principle number two. When I betray myself, I start to see the world that justifies my self-betrayal. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you decide, I'm not getting up with that kid, why am I not? 
Well, because I work really fucking hard. Mm -hmm. And she didn't do anything all day long. And tomorrow she doesn't have anything to do. Mm -hmm. I got up in the middle of the night last night. So, yeah, you should get up. And I should get some sleep. Right. Oh, okay. yeah. All of a sudden, you're in the box, Marita. Oh, yeah. And then and then you're both laying there getting angry at each other. And this is such... It's so relatable. Sure. We've got a year and a half old. There are nights when we're both just laying there. <laughs> I'm not thinking... I'm in the box. It's more like you're not getting in the box, but it's, <laughs> you just, you know, you're doing it. And when you, I feel like when you can tell that you're doing it, the book poses that that's how you can start to take yourself out. Right. Of the as box. soon as you start to, as soon as you acknowledge that you're not looking at somebody as a person, but an object mm -hmm. or a piece of machinery. Right. I was talking about that with, um, somebody who is Joshua Colburn, who was just in here a few hours ago. Oh, really? About this, because he's a motivational speaker. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, reading this book, I, I quickly found myself relating to it in regards to, I look at my children mm -hmm. as objects quickly, too quickly. I get really mad. And when I relive these situations that I've had with them, now some parents are going to be listening to this and go, oh, dude, we've all been there. Mm -hmm. You're being too hard on yourself. But you're justifying you being in the box. You're mm -hmm. justifying and you're not looking at the fact that this child is a human being. And if you were a little tiny child and you're looking up at this big giant Angry screaming man. at you, bald-headed dude... <laughs> Uh, you would get really nervous. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was thinking about that. I thought about, you know, how do I view my co-host, mm -hmm. Todd? How do I view my guests? Hey, they better be on time. What? They they canceled? You know? Mm -hmm. I cannot allow myself to put myself in the box. Yeah. Well, I have a confession. So when we talk about okay. this, sure. I admit. There is specific times of the day I am in the box. And I know this about myself. It's during my commute. Because you're a road rager. So here's what, <laughs> here's what I don't do. I okay. don't tailgate. So when I am being tailgated, I get really road ragey. And I'm the person that if I think you're too close, I'll let you know. I'll tap my brake. And then if you happen to get out from behind me and we're both stopped at the red light together, yeah, I'm going to race you. <laughs> but I know that about myself. And that's that's probably when I'm at my worst in the box. Because when you're road raging, they're no longer a human being. It's just an object. But do you find – I found myself also thinking so completely relatable, this book, about my wife. Mm-hmm. And our relationship. And I know the first example is about the kid, and obviously people are thinking about that. But the book is mostly about how do you interact mm -hmm. with your coworkers, which is why I brought it up. Well, I kind of brought it up again because of your new position, mm -hmm. right? How your interaction with so now this book doesn't say don't place yourself in the box. Once you get out, you'll never go back in. They're not saying that. Mm -hmm. They're not saying that you can never be harsh with somebody. Right. Basically, the gist of the book is your interaction with somebody needs to be on the level of I'm talking to another human being. Mm -hmm. And with that carries this type of sincerity. Mm -hmm. I care about how you feel. I care about possibly uh, what happened to you this morning, how's mm -hmm. your day going. There's a lot of complexity. I'm not the center of the universe, mm -hmm. and why didn't you come through on your piece of this project? Right. So that's kind of summing up this book. So you can still be harsh and out of the box. That's, that's the premise. It's tough to envision a time when you would be. I think maybe as your kids get older and I don't know, maybe you've got a lot more opportunities to be harsh and caring at the same time. But then, and they talked about this in the book as well. What if you're out of the box, mm -hmm. but the person that you're talking to 
is clearly in the box. There's not really a strategy on how to manage that. You're right. Well, just like, uh, well, I can only say from the uh, example they give, it's really effing hot in here. You're right. <laughs> Actually, I think women handle the heat warmer temperatures better, better than, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> so I'm, I'm comfortable. Okay. Anyway, uh, they do kind of talk about that with the first example mm-hmm. of um, the guy didn't get his piece done. Mm-hmm. He's clearly in this box. He's mm-hmm. wh- And when we say you're in the box, you're defensive. You're immediately, you're defensive. You're immediately looking to blame others. Mm-hmm. You're the good guy. How dare you? How dare anybody kind of pass judgment on me? Look how hard I'm working. Mm-hmm. Look what all I'm doing. I'm getting here early in the morning. I'm leaving late. Um, that is basically saying you're in this box, mm-hmm. right? And you don't want any judgment on you. Right. So on that first example of the book, he is basically said, hey, great job on the 11 tasks that we gave you, but that 12th one. Marita, could you handle the 12th one? Could you take over that one? And he felt slighted. Now, the person saying it wasn't in the box, according to the story, but he was, and, mm-hmm. he, and he remained in that. So I don't think there's any way that you can remove somebody from the box mm-hmm. or remove somebody from that I'm holier than thou, don't judge me type of mentality. I think all you can do is approach them with sincerity. Which that's what his boss does when he walks with him back to his office. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> He's like, um, you know, he asks him about his life, about getting here, mm-hmm. how's he like his job, and there's this sincerity that I've seen faked a lot, yeah, in my career, uh, which goes the other route. So mm-hmm. you you sincerely have to want to know this person on a human level and not just a how can I manipulate you. Mm-hmm. To get you to do what I want. And then he, you know, taps him on the shoulder and says, I know you're not going to let me down again. It's a pretty powerful statement. Right? So he's being caring. He's doing all the things that he should be doing, but he's not letting him off the hook. Mm -hmm. He's still saying, without acting like a total ass, Mm -hmm. when I give you 12 objectives, I need you to complete 12. Do you feel like this approach would work for you? Like, can you think of any scenarios where you would practice this? Yeah, for sure. I mean, just just using this with my children mm-hmm. would be monumentally life-changing for me. I, I think in the last episode I had told you that um, if there was a characteristic I wanted to work on on myself, it's like my short temper, I fly off the handle. Um, I do overdo it, mm-hmm. I think, with the whole, I love you you know, and the hugging and all that stuff. So it's not just Mm one-sided. It's almost bipolar. It's almost just back and forth. But I say I love you in a mean way. Like, hey, you know dad loves you, right? (laughs) (laughs) So that when angry dad voice comes out, they don't immediately think they're in trouble. They think maybe, maybe there's some love coming. Yeah. Also, is that retarded? Well, I'm not to that stage, so I'm pretty sure that you've been your limits have been tested much further than mine. <laughs> much further. It is odd that we treat the ones that we love with the least amount of patience. Oh yeah. Yep. So the other day I got a letter in the mail from Break the, it down. The law firm that did my uh application for trademark, service mark. Mm-hmm. And I guess when the application came back, they had a couple of questions for me. So a friend of mine who works at this law firm, he is my connection, but I'm not directly working with my friend. This is third party guy. Well, I never responded. Funds are tight. So I thought, uh, I'll deal with this later. A couple of weeks, I get a bill. So my husband is really, really upset on my behalf because he feels like maybe someone's taken advantage of me. Okay. Because lawyers are really effing expensive. Sure. And literally the charge was, I read the letter, I thought about it, and then I wrote this email. And here's the bill. And here's the $400 for, bill. For me reading and thinking and sending. Yeah. <laughs> you, you should. Everybody should be attorneys and lawyers because they make bank. 
His response was to get angry. And he pointed at me and he said, fix it. He wasn't angry at me. He was angry at them. But the response was a little convoluted. We ended up talking about it later. And we came to the same conclusion. It's funny how we can get really upset with the ones that we love when that they're really not the cause of all of our emotions. Well, was he mad at you because there was a bill and you could have you could have and should have thought ahead on this and there shouldn't be a bill and hey, we don't have the money for this bill. It's because of you that we have this bill. Was was that part of why he was upset or was he simply mad because he hates lawyers? <laughs> well, maybe a little column A, a little column B. <laughs> He he thought that somebody was charging me, mm-hmm. not charging me fairly, taking advantage of me, and charging. I mean, that's a significant amount of money, especially if you're just talking a startup. And so I think he's been pretty unplugged from the whole company. And so I think he sees stuff like that. And he doesn't know how to, doesn't really know how to handle that. So... He just sees somebody that he thinks taking advantage of me and charging me money, and he thinks I'm just going to pay it. Right. So his frustration is, don't be naive. Don't pay this. Go make what's right. Don't right. be a sucker. Yeah. Fix it. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a total guy mentality, right? I probably. Don't be a sucker. Fix it. <laughs> I yeah. can see my dad saying that. Yeah. And then him making a big deal like, like he's going to do something about it. And then, you know, you find out. So what'd you do? I just paid it. Uh-huh. Over, t- over time, you just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the lady's response, generally, the, I shouldn't say generally. Well, maybe I should. Generally. Not always now. Mm-hmm. But generally, women are, I found my wife to be very relaxed. Mm-hmm. She doesn't jump to conclusions. She doesn't get really excited. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, let's let's look into this. Let's make a phone call. Mm-hmm. Let's ask some questions. We'll figure it out. Yep. Um before uh before we go crazy, mm-hmm. we will know all the facts. Because which I really appreciate. I at uh in my past I have been a union rep. Okay. And I, I've I've heard stories and I've dealt with union people who get really upset mm-hmm. because they've jumped to a conclusion. They don't have all the facts. They want me to submit a grievance. They want me to act right now, fix it, get it done. Mm-hmm. And then I think the people that are unsuccessful in that position as a union steward, as a as a union president is the people that just knee-jerk react to mm-hmm. a complaint instead of going, you know what, that sounds like a terrible situation. I'm sorry you're in it. Let me contact that supervisor and I'll, I'll look into it. And then I'll get back to you. So this was a role that you had. I still, I still kind of have it. Still kind of yeah. have it? Must be going Count well someone. if you're still with it. <laughs> I'm an alternate steward. Yeah. So, uh, some things hit me, mm-hmm. but the, the, the culture that has been created where I work is, is like, uh, I, ideally if you had an issue, you should go to your alternate steward. Mm-hmm. And then if I didn't have the answers or I couldn't deal with it, or if I wasn't there, go to your steward, go up the chain of command kind of, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. If that steward didn't deal with it. And the president or whoever the is on shift, you know, maybe you could contact them to maybe deal with it. Um, but more often than not, what I see happen is people don't take the time because they want this instant fix. They want instant gratification. They want an instant answer. Mm-hmm. Whether it's a whether it's a problem with their payroll, maybe it's a problem with. Uh, well, with pay, if they had to go to a, a funeral or something, something odd happened. Maybe they put in for vacation. They didn't get it. Uh, maybe they weren't asked for overtime. But they, now, I want the answer now. So hmm. if you don't knee-jerk react, 
a lot of times they just like one or two times they might um they might interact with the steward. Mm-hmm. Generally, never the alternate steward <laughs> where I'm at. So your role is really to help calm people down. Yeah. And not propagate the excitement. Try not to. Right. Really try not to. It, and that's very difficult. It's difficult to try to manage people and not look like you have an ulterior motive. Sure. It's hard to manipulate people. <laughs> it's hard to handle people yeah. and not seem evil, like you're manipulating people. Like, yeah, yeah, I hear you. <laughs> we'll we'll deal with it. Right. And it's and it's difficult. It's difficult to not put forth that facial feature mm-hmm. that <laughs> oh, <laughs> this fuck. again. This I mean outwardly. Again. Yeah. I might not be saying, oh fuck. <laughs> But you're showing. But it. I'm showing. <laughs> I'm sure my face is like, oh fuck. <laughs> really? Can you not go a whole day without bitching? Can you not go a whole shift without finding an issue? You know, if if there's not a lot going on, and that's the only thing that you can think about, it consumes your mind. For sure. And then for sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But you, lady, you're going to have to be dealing with things like that. Now, I forget, is Rockwell, does Rockwell have a union in it? Do you have to deal with union-type issues in the managerial capacity? It depends what area you're working in. So we have union representation. Um, from my experience, we would work manufacturing and production, transition to production. Mm-hmm. So there's some folks there. Um, you know... From a non-union perspective, I think, and I'll tell you what I did this week. I snuck some uh, <laughs> office furniture into my new office in the Wait middle of the night. Wait a second. You're not going to be grieved for anything. You're not going to get in trouble. I mean, somebody else <laughs> snuck on <laughs> furniture. <laughs> but it's kind of this dance of what do I need done? Does it need to be a ticketed to the union? And if it does... I mean, is this something that I can close my door and do myself? But when I when I first started at Rockwell, I was transporting equipment. Didn't know any better, you know, new hire. Right. And uh, I think that's the closest I got to having a grievance filed against me. But it, it requires a little bit of education to know, you know, what we can do, what we can't do. You know, not taking somebody else's job away, that sort of thing. Right. And it's important, especially if, the two groups are commingling. There's just different rules. Sure. But yeah, we do. We do have union representation. Um, I've worked, I've been on both sides of this fence, mm-hmm. right? I would love to be on top of the fence. I would like to be in like a different yard. Yeah, you're going to straddle it? I would love to straddle the fence, right? It's probably a picket fence though, so watch out. Mm, be careful. <laughs> as long as it doesn't have razor wire. True. So I've been on, obviously, the union side, mm-hmm. but I've also been on the managerial side. And I've had a plenty of grievances filed against me. Have you? A plenty. I would never have a guessed. A ton. <laughs> what? You were saying... Anyway. Oh, God. What I realized, what I was reminded of when I was reading the... I shouldn't. I'm sorry. Listening to the book because I didn't read it. Mm-hmm. When I was re- uh, listening to this book, which is, again, Leadership and Self-Deception, Get Out of the Box, was... I always, I never removed myself from the box. It was immediate and always us versus them. You carried the box with you. I carried the box with me. I, and, and, uh, you know, from the examples of the book, I did do this whole thing of I, I, I'm getting there early. I'm, I'm leaving late. Mm-hmm. I'm trying not to bitch and complain. I'm asking people what they need. I'm trying to help out. I'm trying to go above and beyond. How dare you <laughs> file a grievance against me? Don't you see I'm a good guy? Don't you know I'm a good guy? Just a year ago, I was on the floor working side by side with you. Don't you know who I am? Mm-hmm. Never once did I ever get out of the box. Wow. How long were you in it? Are you still in it? <laughs> <laughs> I was in I was in that position and I was in the box of self-deception for three solid years. It was the roughest 
three years of my life, I'll never I this is how I attribute it. I do have good relationships with um, people in management in my new job that I've had for like the last seven years. Um, because I can see both sides of this now and I I sincerely feel pity for them when they have to deal with a certain issue, you know? Uh, and they know that I was a supervisor in a previous position. So they, they know they can, there's some things that they can kind of let slip and they, they can let their guard down and, um, and they know I can relate to them. But this is how I say it to them. You know, when I looked at management, management, I thought that looks like an amazing roller coaster ride. I want to get on. <laughs> Wee. Wee. <laughs> <laughs> and when I got off that fucking ride, uh, I'll never get back on it. It made me sick. Mm-hmm. And I never want to get back on it. I never want to have to be responsible for managing people. Um, it's, it's, I almost, I look at it now, I would have to really see a good example. And in this audiobook, they're talking about great examples of management of people that are dealing well with other people. And it could just be that I've had my last two jobs, I was in a position where upper management was terrible to lower management. Oh, that's too bad. I've never seen a good example. I've never seen a good example of it. I see, this is what I see. I see uh, lower management or middle management trying to make a judgment call, trying Mm -hmm. to do the right thing. They do it. Upper management comes down and goes, what are you doing? (laughs) <laughs> clearly this guy is a good guy. Clearly, clearly you don't want to write him up. Let's, you know what, it's just... Completely uh, undermining authority. Oh. Any sort of decision making. For sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, one of my most memorable memorable moments was uh, my boss came down and said, hey, I just had a meeting with the higher ups. Flavor of the month which obviously by what I just said means they're only going to be concerned about this for right now. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to go away. And so the culture has to change for right now and they want some heads to roll. Oh boy. Right. I don't want to see any long breaks. People, uh, upper management's going to be walking around the floor. Uh, I want you to deal with this. Right. Okay. Okay. I'll deal with it. Um, I notice because they had our offices kind of up on a second level above okay. above the bathroom so we could look down okay. on all the little people. <laughs> look down on all the factory workers. So you could see all the machines running. Sure. Right? Or not running. Right. Uh, so I could easily notice, hey, that machine's not running. Look at my watch. Oh, they must have left and gone to break. Mm-hmm. 45 minutes later, the machine's still not running. And I see them walking back from the break room. So then I would walk over. I'd, I don't. I hate to be that. God, that that's sucks. So that's bad. the part that sucks. I hate yeah. this part. Big brother helping somebody. I love. Mm-hmm. I love helping somebody. Hey, what do you need? You you you're an adult. You have to do a job. You know you have to do whatever. What can I do to help you? I love that. Mm-hmm. Put me in that position. Never put me in the position of. Uh, you know the flavor of the month is. Long break times, right? I just, if you guys didn't know that, that's what it is. I'm just trying to be transparent with you. So, help me help you. Oh my God, please tell me you didn't say that. I did actually say that. Oh, you I did. did actually say that because I would get so tired. It would just bear, it would just break me down after so long, right? Wow. And I, and I would try to say, now listen. I just I, I want you guys to know that that's what we're watching. That's what we're that's what whoever cares about right now. Just keep doing your hard work. Just keep doing what you're doing, but please keep an eye on the clock when you take a break. Okay? Cuz if you do, then I don't have to have this talk with you and we can just get our day over with. Very next break. 45 minutes to an hour. Oh my gosh. <laughs> See twice in one day? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, t- I'm not. I'm not kidding when I said I had grievances against me all the time. I just was not. I didn't have the right mentality. I didn't have the right training. Um, I was a poor supervisor. I just was. I take responsibility for that. I didn't come across genuine. 
from the get go, it was because I worked with these people for so long. I liked a lot of them, but I also knew all their dark little secrets. Oh, sure. So being in management then, like, you're not fooling me when you say you're doing this. I know what you were doing. I've known you for the last 12 years. Last month I was out there with you doing the same thing. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, exactly. And then they would say, really? Yeah. You're going to bring this up? I'm pretty sure you were doing this. busting my balls. I'm sure you got that all the time. Yeah, and I would say, listen, you're not giving me any wiggle room here. I'm telling you right now, this is the last time I'm going to say it. You, if if I had to say something again, this actually worked on me when I was younger. This was my first disciplinary act when somebody, when I was being disciplined. I was late to work like three or four times in one week. I was 18 years old. I was working in the very same factory. And my supervisor called me up, woke me up. I made some lame excuse about my car, went into work, took me right into HR and said, listen, if you're late again, I'm not firing you. You're firing you. You're choosing to give up this job for sleep. Oh, wow. So either this job is a priority to you or it's not. But I want you to go home now, think about it for the weekend, and when you come back Monday, you need to decide, is this where you want to be? Sounds like a really good manager. That that was the best thing I had ever... I went out and bought multiple alarm clocks that day. Oh, wow. So... Uh, that had changed me. So I tried to use that on people also. Hey, listen, we've talked about this. If you're, if you just go grossly over the break time, you're not, you're writing yourself up. I'm not writing you up. You're doing this to yourself. Okay. I'm trying to give you a break here. I'm trying to give you a heads up for you. So then this is the worst part. So then I go to write them up because again, Third break comes long. I mean, just boom, 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 all in one day. Boom, boom, boom. Ugh. So then I have to write them up, which then shuts down the machine. It's just negative. I'm in the box. It's me versus them. Why are you doing this? I'm trying to give you, I'm trying to be the good guy. Why can't you listen? Again, I was a terrible supervisor. I'm in the middle of writing them up. The union steward is screaming at me. Screaming, calling me names. The steward. The, the steward. The person that's supposed to contain the oscillations of emotion, like calm. Right. Yeah. Call me just about every name in the book. I'm not swearing. He's swearing. He's yelling. I'm trying to say, listen, you're not here to get him out of this. You're here to witness what I'm doing. This guy doesn't even need to sign this document, but you do. As a steward, you need to sign saying that you were present when I gave him this write-up. So then I would get really pissed. Ugh. And that that me getting pissed stayed with me for three years. That was that was my emotion. I was I, when I say I was in the box for three years, I mean it. I mean I was this whole us versus them. So now when I when I'm in a new, a completely new company, mm-hmm. and I see supervisors deal with this. And I see them slip into this us versus them mentality. And they just are clueless. I was clueless. I had no idea. I well, what do I do? Do I try to be their do I try to be their friend? Do I try to uh keep them at an arm's length? Nope. We're not joking around, we're not bullshitting, we're not we're not doing any of that. Just you're a number. We're, we're just punch the clock, it's, man. It's, it's, it's business. Mm-hmm. I've seen all of that. It's like uh, this this whole thing about I'm, I need to see you as a person, it leaves. And, and it's so hard to get out of that box. Oh, yeah. And that's just manufacturing, you know? Um, thinking about my kids and... And my and my wife and, and my friends and all this stuff. How now you took you read this book. Did you think it was foo foo? Did you think it was crazy when you first read it? No, I some people subscribe to this outright. Some people just kinda like you said, think it's a whole bunch of hooey. Right. I read it and I try and figure out how I think it relates to my life. 
And, you know, if you're married, um, you know how it feels to be at odds with somebody, your best friend, essentially. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I read it, I think there was something going on between us at the time. And it's like, oh, wow. I can definitely tell when I'm in the kitchen doing a chore and he's sitting on the couch. I'm getting in that box. So the second he comes into the kitchen to ask how my day is, <laughs> well, how do you think my day is going right now? You know, it. you can just, you feel it. You can feel it. You can feel, and I did, and I, I identified, oh my God, I'm reading about this and I'm doing it. And so it helped me kind of change my perspective. Right. But you know, there are a couple of people in my life that I've identified that I carry my box around with, and I know it, and I still struggle with getting out of this box, and it's with my my parents. Oh, right. I mean, probably even more so than my spouse, and sometimes I think my spouse enables me to stay in the box with my parents, depending on the situation. Right, and that's a tricky line because he either enables you or he doesn't support you. Right. So it's a lose-lose situation <laughs> for the spouse. Right. Except for maybe you could say, <laughs> maybe you could say, I know you're having a hard time with this. I'm, I'm with you. Whatever you need, that's the right decision. <laughs> I think that's maybe? the go-to response. So for anyone listening that is in this situation, do that. <laughs> do that. <laughs> Good advice, Matt. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. It, it's tough because you identify it and then it's like, well, what what do I do about it? And you try to remove yourself from the box. But if somebody else that, you know, that's in the situation with you, if they're in the box and not coming out, you start justifying, well, well, I'm not getting out of my box because they're not working with me. And, and so I'm not going to work with them. It's just, it's such an easy pitfall to... To go back into right, and, and I kind of feel like I want to get away from this whole um, the the word the verbiage. <laughs> so <laughs> I feel like such a loser when I'm <laughs> when I'm talking about. It. But it it is truly it's it's it. You should just be able to say, try not to get defensive. Try to see something from somebody else's perspective for a second. That other person has a whole life going on. What you are interacting with is a small piece right now. Mm -hmm. You know, my wife coming home from work, um, she's a labor and delivery nurse. She could have had the best day of her life or she could have had a horrible day. Interacting with women who have had demises, interacting with girls who've been raped. I can't even imagine. Interacting with women who, no shit, this is... An honest to God, true story. She's watching the husband pop back and forth between two rooms. Oh, wow. Because his mistress is also giving birth. Really? And it comes out then. Oh That's my gosh. when it comes out. So I bring that up only because when she calls and says, Hey, I'm going to be a little late, or if she's not home when I think she should be home. Like a normal job. Hey, what do you work? You work 7 to 7? All right, well, then you should be home at 7.15, 7 7.30. Yeah, I thought we were going to have dinner together. Does this mean you don't want to have dinner with me? Am right. I having dinner on my own? Did I do something? You must expect me to be doing chores while you're not coming home on time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, but, but knowing that about her, uh, she was probably the first person I just said, whatever, whatever happens, happens. I'm not, when you get home, I'm not angry. You could get home at 9 o'clock at night, and if you do, I know you're a superhero because you've chosen to stay and help. Maybe there wasn't enough nurses on staff. Maybe there was a horrible thing that was happening. Mm -hmm. um, but you could have you could have bailed. And she's in one of those jobs where that's possible. Yeah, it's a life or death thing. Right. It's not, I need to put out one more piece of that product right. to put out. You I know? need to finish this report. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, re, uh, listening to this book uh, and thinking about our discussion tonight, I was thinking about how does this apply to all these different aspects of life? Okay. Mm -hmm. 
I started thinking about politics. Okay. <laughs> I started thinking about gun rights activists, abortion activists, yeah, gay rights activists. I was thinking about all these things that we find ourselves so angry and passionate about. And I and I instantly think all of these people, both sides, are in this box. Mm-hmm. Both sides. I haven't heard anybody say, well, I'm sure there have been people, but I haven't heard it in the media. Anybody say, you know what? I really thought about it from their point of view. And I'm sure they're coming from a place of love. I'm sure that to them, this is super important. You know what I mean? See, like you never hear that. This comes back to our topic about media when we talked the last time about right. how media propagates fear. Yeah. You might have even called them terrorists. Maybe. Yeah. I've been known to say that. You know, if, if somebody <laughs> came out in politics and said, you know what? I think they're coming from a place of love. You might be torn apart. That's correct. So it's almost like because of that environment, everybody's afraid to be a human being. And the expectation is almost they have to be in that box. Right. They cannot be. Differentiate. Right. Can you, can you imagine? And, and maybe we've had a couple of politicians, but they haven't gone very far. What did you think of the, the recent caucus? Did you get involved at all? Yeah, we did. I got really stressed out. <laughs> so we, uh, so my well, husband and I went to the same facility. Okay, because you you actually caucused. We did. Wow. Tell me about the experience. Explain to those of us because mm-hmm. I've never done it. Okay. Explain to us what is the Iowa caucus? What do you do? So I've been to an Iowa caucus. By the way, funny names, caucus. <laughs> so I've been twice. The last time I went was eight years ago. So eight years ago, I was at the Republican caucus. Ooh, you're one of them. And this week, (laughs) I was at the Democratic caucus. Shut your front door. I know. I'm totally an issues person. So I figure out which- Shouldn't everybody be an issues person? Isn't that what we all should be about instead of, you know what? That label- Is all I care about. (laughs) I just want that label in the office, and that label is Republican. (laughs) I just want that label of Democrat in the office because they're going to make everything better. I, you know what? I have to laugh at the campaign rhetoric that's like the promises. If you vote for that person, well, he's just a loser. (laughs) Don't vote for that loser. No, they didn't just trade out. Oh my gosh. We're back in high school. I just, hilarious. So I'm an issues person. So right. I wanted to... How dare you, by the way? I know. Deal with it. So I wanted to support the issue that's important to me. So we show up and don't have child care. So we took our daughter with us. Now, I don't mean... I'm not bragging, but our daughter goes to bed at 6.30 at night. Okay. So... When we showed up it, at the caucus, it was 6.30. So here's how it works for Democrats. So if you're a registered Democrat, you sign in, you go into a room. Depending on how many candidates, it's kind of like playing, I don't even remember the, na- the name of the game anymore, but you go to the corner of your candidate. So that's your horse. If you're not a registered Democrat, you sign up. Um, and you don't have to sign up as a Democrat. You just have to say, hey, I'm here because you're not on the list because you're not registered. I don't know. Why did your camera go black, lady? Oh, did I break the camera? (laughs) I don't want to say that you broke the camera, but uh, hold on a second. Let me look at this. You know what? You just keep talking with this black screen. I'll get you worked up. You know what? Maybe somebody heard that we were talking politics and uh, hacked the system (laughs) and decided to shut down my camera. Maybe they did do that. There, oh, there you go. Hey. There's no memory card, by the way. There you go. Cool. So, yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the ranch. Meanwhile. So you uh, show up in All of room. that was recorded. We still heard everything you said. Fantastic. Okay. So you go to your separate part of the room. Yes. And then people will count, all right, how many people are on each side? And then there's probably going to be a portion that uh, 
uh, are undecided. Mm -hmm. By the way, don't ever go to a caucus undecided. Do the rest of us a favor. Please figure out what you, like who you support before you go there. Don't put yourself in the box. There's a whole reason. The whole reason for the caucus, (laughs) and educate me if I'm wrong, (laughs) is to ask these questions and for people to persuade others. But it's about me. It's about me and wanting to go home. Clearly, she's in the box, everybody. (laughs) Clearly. So there we are with my daughter, and <laughs> right, uh, which who's is a not stress. going to bed. That's mm-hmm. a stressor, right? You've introduced a stressor. You know, yep. this is going to be a late night. Yep. Oh yeah, I wasn't really sure how late, and thank God we weren't at one of the precincts that had thousands of people and line out the door. Thank God. Right. So we had our hundred and thirty people, however many were there, and they counted probably like eight times. So they do the counting, then yes, people will go and convince your undecideds, and then they go to other parts of the room, everybody claps, (laughs) they count eight more times. Is is that annoying when they all clap? It's Uh, like, come on, get over yourself. You know what? Every time they clapped, I started singing, uh, if you're happy and you know what, clap (laughs) your hands. Because my daughter would clap, and that's a lot of fun. Oh, okay. Yeah, and because you had to entertain your daughter. Sure. So she's running around, and at one point, the guy who's counting yeah. sees me moving 10 feet, chasing my daughter. So he stops. Yes. As if I, I'm one of many people that are moving, which is not. I'm the only one moving. He goes, excuse me, people. Can you please stop moving? I'm like, looking at this guy and giving him the look of death. I know you mean me. Just say me. <laughs> So I pick up my daughter like, okay, I'm holding still. So he starts the counting again. And I made sure to give him a very angry 11. (laughs) He's going through and counting. But um, it's chaotic. So if you were to go to a caucus as a Republican. um, Is it different? Is it different? It's different. Shut up. It's Why is totally it different? different? I don't know. If you have OCD, just go and caucus Republican. Everybody <laughs> sits in a nice, orderly fashion. You get a piece of paper. People calmly walk up to a microphone. They say, I'd like to talk about Carly Fiorina, and this is why I believe in her, and she's doing this, and she's got this going on. Right? Okay. You know, everybody gets their turn. I think even family members uh, stood up and talked on behalf of Trump, Cruz, what have you, Rubio. And, uh, of course, I don't think too many of those folks were here. Most of them were in Des Moines. But, yeah, so at the end of these conversations, they – I don't know if they ring a bell. I can't remember. But you write a name, secret ballot, and then put it in the thing. There's no pressure. They just take it all and count it at the end. And All right, I'm going. Now, now that's a Republican yes. caucus. That's right. So what you're saying is the Democrats are all fucked up. They have spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Which is odd. To me, it's odd because I, I, I think of Democrats as people who get walked all over. I think of Republicans as this really fiery, the ones this is doing the, way the it walking. Is. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. But that's I, not what you saw. That's not how you felt. It's, uh, it's just an event where people who are all about the same issues are showing up. And it, you know what? It's kind of neat. I will say that when you walk into a room of hundreds of people okay. that you've never met before, mm-hmm. just knowing that you're all there for the same reason, and maybe even there's people there that are just as passionate, if not more passionate than you about the things that you want to happen in the yeah. country. Right. I don't know. It's kind of a weird, old, crotchety adult emotion when you're just like, this is cool. Yeah. This, this is, is cool. This is patriotism. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is America. No, America. no. This isn't America. It's America. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say it like that. America. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. Thank you. Yeah, uh, it was it's totally that America feeling. It was great. But it was stressful. I don't think it'll be stressful when my well, daughter maybe, gets older. Maybe maybe you should think ahead. Maybe you should know when the caucus is going to happen and if it means that much to you, you get a babysitter. You're in the box. Maybe. <laughs> you know, my go-to babysitter is a young lady. And who am I to say, hey, you know, if you want a caucus, too bad, watch my kid. 
So, you know, that's how I justified it. Really? Yeah. I was kind of curious to see how she'd do anyway. But, but yeah, so if you have some place to be, if you have a schedule on the night of a caucus, you just prepare to get stressed out. So, uh, hey, what you got going on over there? Something that you took out of the wall? It's called thinking ahead. Oh. It's also called troubleshooting. And um, you would appreciate this as an engineer. Maybe. I don't fucking know. <laughs> For whatever reason, these cameras that we're using, if you leave them plugged in, mm -hmm. they get this weird, they trip out. They trip out and they go all Japanese on me. They they show they start showing Japanese like commercially things. Like really, a, almost like a screensaver, right? Huh. So they only work well on battery power. At least this one over here does. So is it starting to go Japanese on you? It was. It was. Yeah. I had I had to plug it in because you went dark, right? Yeah. So I turn. I plugged it in. I I have. It's power to it. <laughs> it got crazy. And I'm like, oh, oh, shit. I better, I better plug it back in. Well, then it went weird. And I, you know why this is back. happening? Because it's your first live night on YouTube. Everything goes wrong first time, man. Murphy's Law. <laughs> you could be right. So I, I would attribute the hot temperature to that. Your camera's going berserk. Good old Murphy's Law. How's it working there, Chief? I don't know. Did it come up? I see me. Do you? I don't see you on the camera. I see me on the uh, on the screen, on the viewfinder, plugging in HDMI. Let's see how it super, goes. Super, super interesting podcast when people are troubleshooting their equipment, right? <laughs> the caucus craziness is craziness. Yeah. So you said you didn't go. I didn't go. My so, nephew went. Yeah? My nephew went. There was pictures of him and Facebook, and mm -hmm. he's doing the right thing. Here, do you, make yourself useful. Yeah. Plug that, plug that in. Yeah, hook me up. Plug that in right there. I look at this. I, I want to be a glass half full type of fella, but I'm not. I'm just not. I find myself in the box, and I think it is a silly thing that we continue to do, which is caucus, spend all, your whole night, get you emotionally invested. Mm -hmm. um, look at that. It's back up. Hey. Um, get you emotionally invested in issues that you think <laughs> whoever you're voting for is going to give a fuck about. Yeah. Right? Right. I mean, uh, a great example, when people look at what Barack Obama ran for mm -hmm. in his whole all of his slogans hope and change hope and change on his website we're going to support whistleblowers that was on his website and then snowden and then snowden happened mm -hmm. and it got removed off his website immediately really and there's i mean he did push universal health care right mm -hmm. yep but besides that he has really just taken on the game plan of Bush. He really just kind of continued on with what Bush was doing. Wouldn't you agree? Possibly. I, I don't see him actually following through with the whole hope and change, the mm -hmm. transparency of government type thing. It's funny that you bring this up. Somebody at work, I believe, watched a documentary and they correlated public opinion with uh, what actually happens in a person's candidacy and the decisions that the candidates or leaders of this country make don't usually don't follow public opinion. There is a correlation, however, to decisions that leaders make and opinions of the top one percenters. Oh, that's odd. I, I would have never guessed that. So even if it feels like Obama is propagating the Bush agenda, or if he's just a... I think they're all just kind of a part of the machine. But that's my point. That's my point. Right. The caucus is an illusion. It's like saying, look at this hand while this hand does this over here. Do you really think 
do you really think? I mean, ideally, you probably think that what you're doing is a good thing. What you're doing is being patriotic. What you're doing is you're being a good U.S. citizen by being mm-hmm. a part of the process. Actually, I don't know if those thoughts crossed my mind. I didn't do it really? because I felt like I had a duty. Not at so all. So why did you do it? Because I didn't caucus four years ago. And you didn't like the outcome? Uh, Wait, you didn't caucus last or mm-hmm. four years ago. So why? Why exactly were you so motivated to be a part of it this year? Honestly, some of it is related to my business. Um, I really care a lot about, so companies projecting growth, right? It's difficult because we're in the middle of global workforce shortage. So the needs that the companies in the U.S. have cannot be satisfied by what's being produced by the U.S. college system. I think it's imperative to be able for our companies to grow, to offer jobs to people that are not from the U.S. So immigration is a really hot topic for me. I think we need to be more open to that. And I think the next four years is going to be really pronounced. As baby boomers are retiring, it's just, it's going to be huge. So it was important to me to feel like I made my voice heard. Now, Mm -hmm. in all likelihood, maybe it doesn't matter, but the alternative is doing nothing. So the more nothing I do, you know, then... Four years from now, if if I don't like the shape that the country is in, it's my own damn fault. Now, I would say you're correct in that in some way. Mm -hmm. If you don't participate, if you don't try, it's like being in your union. If you're part of a union, but you never, ever step up and try to be one of those leadership roles, Mm -hmm. really, can you just really sit on the sidelines and just bitch everybody out who's on the field? trying to make a play, trying right. to do the right thing. Right. So I commend you for that. But aren't isn't the isn't the scenario truly just I don't I mean after Bush, after mm-hmm. Bush got out, I was so angry at Bush. I blamed him for everything. Some re, some of the things maybe he is to blame for, you know, um Maybe maybe other things he's not. But what I looked at was we don't focus enough on congressmen and senators. Sure. They're the ones that push bills through. Mm-hmm. They're really the workhorse right. of our political system. And if they're being influenced in a negative way, really our president, he's just – the quarterback, he's just the spokesman. He's just the one getting up in front of the podium getting mm-hmm. fucking railed on. Right. Or because of our um, economic back and forth, it's, this is just the way it goes all throughout history. If you just want to watch history, it just goes back and forth like this. So sure. if you're the president, <laughs> if you're the president on that upswing, man, you're going to get a lot of <laughs> you're going to get a lot of thumbs up and you're sure. going to get a lot of praise like Clinton. Right. Right. Everybody loves Clinton. Everybody loves Clinton, mm-hmm. except for the people who hate blowjobs. <laughs> you know what's funny? As my husband likes Hillary more than Clinton, even though he knows that Clinton was the one that, you know, the whole Monica Lewinsky thing why, had the indiscretion. Why is that such a big deal? Because he lied to Congress, right? Because he lied under oath. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But wouldn't you lie? I mean, if the nation, if the whole world was saying, uh, Mr. President, we believe that uh, she gave you head under the under the desk at the old office, wouldn't you say, you I know what? I did not let that woman drop my drawers. Yeah. Uh, you know what? What is the definition of is? You know what's funny is I wonder how many people were persecuting him and then leaving to go have an affair. <laughs> You know, on their spouse. Oh, absolutely. Or the Republican congressmen who hate and they vote for every anti-gay law and then they're gay. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't, it doesn't make a lot of sense. It doesn't. It really doesn't. But you feel like just because we have the caucus doesn't really make much of a difference. Is that kind of what I'm hearing? Well, what I'm wondering is... Is it an outdated system? 
Yes. Is it kind of like the electoral college? Back in the day, we had an electoral college because we couldn't get the message out to everybody about a, a, a politician. So we had to have so many electoral college votes per state because those were the people that were educated enough. Those the were know. the yeah, yeah, they were the people in the know. So, but today. You have videotape of police officers beating somebody, or in the next breath, you have the uh, a videotape of a baby falling down or a kitten. I mean, so many people mm-hmm. are so plugged into so much, you can't say that we don't have the ability to be educated on what's going on. So the whole electoral college, what we vote on, truly, this is how I feel, and it might be reality and uh, comment in the section below on YouTube. If it's not, educate me, please. But the popular vote means nothing. It's all about the Electoral College. Those votes, they name the president. Am I correct? As far as you know. So that's my understanding. I've always thought that the public opinion drove some of the electoral college stuff but i'm not entirely sure how that works I, me neither i'm not entirely it's, sure it's been a long but time it since still comes down to history. that person he or she whoever has the power right. of saying that's my vote right so then when you're thinking of that you're like well f- shit if the pop <laughs> if if the popular vote doesn't matter if right. my one vote doesn't matter why would i caucus why would I caucus if the person that I'm hoping is going to do something, it's just talk. And they're just going to play their role when they get there, just like Obama did. Mm-hmm. He's just going to play his role. Maybe he knows things that are national secrets that they don't want us to know, and he has to play that role. Maybe. I would like to think that there's a soul right. in these people who become presidents, and they're really, truly trying to do the right thing. Mm-hmm. I want to think that. But it's hard to right. when you hear about things saying, well, the Congress asked uh, the Federal Reserve for their memos, and all the Federal Reserve memos were blanked out, blacked out. What's that called when you... I think you said it right, blacked out. So if the Federal Reserve is not held to the Congress, if the Federal Reserve is like, no, you're not supposed to know that stuff wait a second, I'm pretty sure you're just a business. You're not anything federal. Mm -hmm. Even though federal's in your name, (laughs) you're just a bank. Yeah. So what exactly gives you the power to say to your dad, since you're you're supposed to be the kid, Right. what gives you the power to say to your dad or your parents, no, no, you really really shouldn't know these things? There's probably... Gosh, there's probably so much we don't even know about. <laughs> right, but it's that it's that st- it's the stuff that they don't say right. that makes you question everything. Yeah. It's like if you were just open, tell us how bad it is truly. Tell it really just let it all out and then I know. I know why we're doing this. Mm-hmm. I understand it. I can wrap my head around it. Or I just don't trust anybody, which is where I fall. I don't trust anybody. I've fallen between two candidates that I might vote for. Mm-hmm. Would you like to know who I'm going to vote for? You can share that if you want. All right. Right now, I'm there's a toss-up between Bernie Sanders mm-hmm. and for all you haters out there, go ahead. Right now, just go, boo. Oh, wait. <laughs> or Donald Trump. Okay. And for all you Donald Trump haters, go ahead and do their thing now. But here's why. Here's why those two. Okay. I don't really give a shit about... Hillary. I mean, yes, for sure. I would love to see a female president. I, w- I, I would love to see the opportunity to be able to go out to anybody, right? Uh, but I'm not going to vote for her f- because she's a woman or against her because she's a woman, but because I think she's just that clone. She's just a political clone, right? Mm-hmm. She just she knows how to work the system. She's right. been in the system so long. She knows what to do. So I don't trust her, right? I don't necessarily trust Bernie mm-hmm. Sanders either, but he has a, a he has that kind of that resonance of hope and change, mm-hmm. right? And I really got behind that whole hope and change, like oh, 
Yes, finally, this somebody, is what I need. something finally is going to change. Yeah. And it didn't change, right? Yeah. So if it's not that, it's not him, I kind of like Trump. And here's why Trump is a fucking nut. <laughs> He's a nut. He, he doesn't fall in line with anybody. Mm-hmm. He's going to say what is on his mind. Yeah. And of, yes, of course, he, his opinion is uh, swayed. By whoever, by by probably the upper one percent, by business, mm-hmm. right? Sure. But he's also willing to say unpopular things, and I'm sure, I'm sure of this. If he wanted something passed, and there were some silly little bastards in the Senate or in the Congress yeah. that were they wanted to play their little political games, uh-huh. I I a hundred percent feel like Trump would have no problem saying. Every night, I will be on national TV. Every night, I will bring up this person, this person. I will call them out <laughs> and say, why aren't you giving the rescue workers of 9-11 health care? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. John Stewart did that. Really? When John Stewart did that, the Congress and the Senate fucking sat on it forever. They weren't going to pass it. Hmm. John Stewart had the audience. He had rescue workers on they told their story and he basically got because he had a huge audience because Mm -hmm. he wasn't afraid to say it it got passed within the week and that's what it takes to get something passed in our country you don't even have to be president so that's why i think maybe donald trump does he say things that are inflammatory yes does he have some kooky ideas sure does he want to build a huge wall (laughs) i guess would it be the the worst thing in the whole world to build a wall? I don't fucking know. I'm thinking maybe the worst thing in the whole world would be to continue our war on drugs. To continue a war, le- uh, actual war, because they classify it as war. Because they classify it as war, they can do things inside the perimeter of the United States that they wouldn't be able to do if there wasn't a war going on inside the United States. Is that why they term it that i don't know you have a war on terror Mm -hmm. now in the patriot act no shit marita no shit now in the patriot the the new revised patriot act if i were to go out and film uh or protest Mm -hmm. against a company could be a pharmaceutical company it could be a farmer okay huge agra, whatever. Yep. And that company could say that they had a loss in profit because of my protest. Mm-hmm. I'm a terrorist. What? No shit. That's How? In, that has that is in the new Patriot Act. That is a form of terrorism if you inflict uh harm upon the profit of a company. Somebody got that into the Patriot Act? Yeah, no shit. Oh wow. I've almost I've thought about doing a whole completely different podcast, which is only solely to do laws. Let's read a law. <laughs> let's read a bill. Yeah. And let me break it down and try to make sense of it. Can you start the podcast with conjunction junction? What's your function? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bill. I'm only a bill. Oh, and up a beer on Capitol Hill. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> Right? You remember those? Oh, yeah. And people learned that shit. Yeah, people they understood did. stuff because they had silly little things like that. Do you need somebody to sing a song about the Patriot Act? <laughs> Should we make up our own little music for it? I, honestly, I need, uh, and I'll put this out there to whoever wants to uh, volunteer their time and help me with this. Uh, I would really love uh, somebody with some legal background mm-hmm. who understands all of that phrasing to break down the Patriot Act for me. The the latest, greatest Patriot Act and some of our bills that are mm-hmm. laws, who passed them? Who put... I mean, I think this is vital. I think this is vital really for everybody who's an American citizen. If you want to get out there and protest against abortion, if you want to get out there and a protest against uh, gay marriage, if you are that committed to your feelings about making this country great, we should first understand what laws are being passed, right? And who is putting what in which laws? Is that something that we 
as the public at large can find out? I think. Maybe. I hope. Yeah. I would like to say yes. They always talk about the pork in the, bills. Yes, exactly. I always wonder, what does that look like? You know, is there this big honking paragraph about uh, doing agriculture in Iowa and um, blah, 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 and then something about, I don't know, building a bridge in Montana, and then more agriculture? Like, what does it the look like? The bridge to nowhere. You've right. heard of the bridge to nowhere. Yeah. That is pork. That is, have you, have you ever watched, um, I'm trying to think, it's on Stars. Okay. It's on Stars, and it's a political show. It's not House of, oh wait, is it House of Cards? I'm not sure. It could be House of Cards. I think it is House of Cards. Okay. But it's fucked. I mean, you watch <laughs> it, you watch it, and you're like, oh my God, for the love of God, if it is even a quarter as fucked up as that. We are screwed. Yeah. We are screwed. And I actually think it's probably right alongside that show. That's probably why they made it. Well, it's it's juicy. Yeah. It's juicy. And uh, I'm sorry, you have a hard line. You have a hard time, right? I What's do. your hard time? It's 8.30. I got to leave at 8.30. Okay. How are have, we doing? You have 25 minutes. Okay. I don't want to run you late. That's all right. I don't want to burn any bridges. Yeah. I just got to get home in time to, you know, do my thing. What is... Th- all right. You want to know? I, I let me let me finish this thought. Let's finish this yeah. piece, and then we, I want to get into this whole okay. thing with you. All, All right, right. We'll we're f- friends, so I'll I'll tell you more. Yeah, you're friends with the nation. You're friends with the world. Yeah, we're cool. It's right. Good. All right. Where the fuck was I? So House of Cards. House of Cards. Fucked. It's fucked. Mm-hmm. We were talking about pork. Yeah. How right? does that even? And then right. the bridge to nowhere. Right. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking that this is how it works. I'm thinking that somebody has an idea, right? Let's do universal health care. May I mean just the idea of that? Let's make sure everybody has health care. Let's make sure everybody's yeah. educated. Leave no child left behind. I mean, those titles. They're like, if you vote against it, you kind of sound like an evil fuck. Yeah. Right. You're a douche if you don't vote for this. Correct. But. No Child Left Behind, the Patriot Act, those things have actually removed more of our liberties than have helped. Mm. I mean, you look at what the common core education system is now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a really funny uh, Facebook video that I saw. I'm, not, I'm generally never on Facebook, but I just saw this. The, okay. I'm trying to be better. I'm trying to be better at socially... <laughs> uh, dealing with my time. Anyway, but there's a, a teacher on there that goes, this is how we were taught math. What's 43 minus 13? And so she has this whiteboard and she's doing it. Mm-hmm. Done, right? This is the common core way. And she starts doing it and it's like 15 steps later. Oh, really? Which makes no fucking sense whatsoever. That's part of the common core. That I truly, I truly feel, and and one of my best friends is a teacher, mm. and he hates it when I bring this shit up. I'm not trying to dig on any teacher, right? I I know that all teachers they're they're in it to help our children. They spend the most time with our kids. They mm-hmm. spend more time with our kids than Some we do. Some of the most passionate people I think you will ever meet. I fucking love teachers. Yeah. Right. I'm not trying to down on them. What I'm downing on is in 50 years, we're going to look back at this time and we're going to go, we really got off course. We changed so much shit every fucking year. Every year they change the way teachers are teaching. There's like eight different ways to do division. Instead of just, okay, listen, it's long division. Let's figure this out. If you understand multiplication, let's do the reverse. This Mm -hmm. is division. Right. If you don't get that, okay, okay, I know I showed you for about a week this way. Let's reinvent the wheel. You didn't get it that way. Let's reinvent the wheel. I'm going to show you another way. A week later, let me reinvent the wheel again. Let me show you another way to do division. So teachers don't have the autonomy to drive the method that they're using? You know what? That's a great question. That's a great, great question for you. Teachers For, for everybody in. out there. I would love to hear it. But I don't think so. I think because of Common Core, I think because mm-hmm. of No Child Left Behind, 
every school district, every every school out there is so worried about their government funding, and the only way they're going to get their government funding is by test scores, that they're downsizing their drama, they're downsizing their band, they're downsizing everything except for athletics. <laughs> <laughs> because Lord knows we got to have an NFL style football uh, stadium in a high school. Don't get me started on million football. dollars spent on local high school football fields. Yet, eh, go fuck your band. Go, eh, go fuck your your theater. We don't have we don't have money for teachers. We got money for uh, football field. Don't get me started on football. My husband watches this show called Friday Night Tykes. Have you heard uh, of it? Have you heard of concussion? I literally, there's a scene in there where I started crying and left the room. Because you know what? I'm sorry. I can't watch a child laying lifeless on a football field. Not lifeless, but not moving. I can't do that. Now, honestly, don't get me started on football. Honestly, have you <laughs> seen the Will Smith no. movie Concussion? Hey, we're going on a date night Saturday, and it's one of the movies we're looking at going to at uh, Collins Road. Okay. Awesome for date night. Yeah. I would also recommend uh, a costume. But yes. primarily what I would suggest is concussion because okay. I watched it, eh, not so legally, but that's, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. Judge free. Yeah. Don't judge me. <laughs> <laughs> but that is one of those things coming back to the book that we started with, I'm so many people are in the box about sports, about football. There's so much ego. There's so much, don't be a pansy. Mm-hmm. Don't try to wussify this nation, right? Right. right. Uh, it's okay. Put a hurting on that kid. It's such a divi- – there's no clearer I, – I, I don't have any love of football. I, I don't have a team. Mm-hmm. My kids have a team. <laughs> yeah. My kids tell me all about players. They yeah. educate me. All my friends tease me. I don't give a fuck, but I the, the I I I don't like it. I just yeah. don't like football. I don't like the money that goes into it. I don't like how horrible professional athletes act anymore. Right. Back in the day, like I, I think about, um, like in the 1980s was probably the last time I really cared about. Like I had idols like Jordan. Mm-hmm. You know, back that during that time, the the Super Bowl shuffle with the Bears. Yeah, you know that era. I enjoyed, but I was a kid. I was a child. But as an adult, you watch this stuff, and it it's almost like you need to have a disclaimer at the beginning. It's almost as bad as cigarettes, I feel. When you watch a football game, when people join Little League football mm-hmm. or high school football or whatever, you should have it on your helmet. By the way, every single time you make contact, you're damaging your brain. And it is not a wussy thing. It is a scientifically proven thing that can Mm be uh, uh, measured. You can see it, but you can't see it until you're dead. Right. And it's compounding. Yes. And the younger you are, the worse it is because... So when you see those little kids get knocked the fuck out... Oh, my God. I can't handle it. They're not as fully developed, right? So right. their necks are weak. The their heads are a little bit bigger. They don't know, you know, if you think of football and you think of, you know, don't drop your head, keep your head up. Right. Well, you know what? Sometimes they're scared and they want to close their eyes and tuck their head and then they start crying and you should see these coaches just yell at these poor kids. Yeah. I just and the the parents are sitting there watching their kids go through all this. Uh <laughs> anything but football. Yes. And maybe not yes rugby. Yes and no. Uh, yeah, rugby, pretty, pretty <laughs> fucking rough too, right? Um, like my kid, one of my sons wrestled this year. Mm-hmm. It was his second time in three years. He, Does that get pretty rough he too? He took some time off. Uh, sure. It. I think, I think wrestling, I think putting hands on your son, you know, and just kind of being rough a little bit. Mm-hmm. I think that is a, I think that's one of the most natural Things that you can do. I mean, when you embrace somebody, when you hug somebody, there's this weird, awesome feeling, right? And wrestling kind of gives you that, especially if you're doing it with your dad, Mm -hmm. you know, and you know he's not out to hurt you. Yeah. Right? But then when you get out there and you watch your son wrestle 
and he starts, he, there's so much pressure. There's so much anxiety. Kids are dressed. Kids have um, uniforms and singlets and things like that mm. as if they are professionals. Instead of saying, Let, you know what, let's focus. Let's focus on technique. Mm-hmm. Let's focus on um, team uh, building. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's, let's focus on all these other awesome attributes that sports are supposed to be providing you. Right. Let's focus on those things. Right. Let's not so much focus on the fact that you look like an NFL linebacker or that you look like a college wrestler because you had to have the $150 fucking singlet, right, that has all these crazy decals on it and you mm-hmm. look awesome. I can't imagine it was always like that. I mean... It wasn't like that when I was a kid. Yeah. Things have changed. Things have changed. changed. I can whisper too. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's scary though, but that mm. but football is one of those things that people are so in the box about. Yeah. And when you see this movie Concussion, and and you can say what you want, listeners, viewers on YouTube, about that movie if you watched it, you could say Will Smith didn't do an amazing job. I thought he did a really good job acting. Um the message is it's a true story. I don't give a fuck that the NFL tried to cover it up. I don't care about that. All I care about is let's face the facts. The facts are every little time you rush forward, every time your body goes forward and you stop quickly, your mm-hmm. brain sloshes to the front of your skull and it impacts the inside of your skull. We were not born. One of the best parts of that movie was Will Smith saying, the woodpecker generates this much G-force, has this many impacts over its lifetime. Its brain, when it impacts, its tongue goes around its brain and acts as a an airbag. No way. Yeah. He gives wow. like three or four different animals mm-hmm. who are designed, like yeah. the ram, right? Yeah. Who are designed genetically to absorb that impact and to deal with it. He said, we are not made to play football. Period. So whether you're a a center, every single play, even though it's not a big like concussion, Mm -hmm. uh, getting tackled, the center, a lineman, the guard, whatever, uh, every time you quickly move forward and then you collide with somebody, Mm -hmm. that's an impact. That's a scar. And the way Will Smith describes it and that doctor describes it is you're being choked. You're being choked from the inside out. Hmm. Every collision is a scar. Wow. Yeah. I won't let my kids play football. Does that mean that they're never going to get a head injury? No. Does that ever mean that they're not going to dive off a diving board, hit water, which means that their brain's going to slosh to the Mm -hmm. front? No. Uh, Are they going to play soccer? Sure. They're going to head the ball. That causes brain. You can't, you can't bubble wrap your kids for the whole world. Sure. I just don't have to support one of the worst versions, which is football. Right. So I would recommend seeing that. And maybe your okay. husband would have a different feeling. You would have to really encourage him to get out of his box. Well, we'll either watch that or we'll watch the lesbian movie. One or the other. I'd go with the lesbian movie. Yeah. Wait, wait, what? I'm sorry. What, was, <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? What? What's this other movie? Carol. It's a, it's a married woman who falls in love with a younger lady who I think works at a department store. And it's kind of the story of <laughs> them realizing things. And, and then the husband uh, tells the wife... You know, if, if this is what you're choosing, then you'll never see your daughter again. So then she has to basically leave the person that she truly loves in order to to stay united with her daughter. Is, is that supposed to be like a feel-good movie? I'm probably supposed to go <laughs> to that with girlfriends, but I think my husband's a little intrigued. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Uh, do you know who the main actors and actresses are? Oh, I'm terrible with names. I'm terrible with names. I'm there with you. So yeah. no, I've seen the lead actress, the the wife. Okay, but I I can't. I tell think her name. that is like a huge push in movies anymore. Like I I was watching all these movies that are up for Academy Awards mm-hmm. or whatever, and uh, there's a ton of transgender movies mm-hmm. out there. Uh, 
the gay and lesbian movies are on. Mm-hmm. I, I don't have anything against that. I think it's whatever. Fine. That's great. If it's a good movie, it's a good movie. If it's a good story, it's a good story. I don't care. Right. Um, yeah, I guess that the Carol movie's up for quite a few awards. The Martian is playing right now. Um, oh, Matt Damon. Martian. Did you see that? I've heard good things. Maybe, maybe oh, not so legally. Okay, right. Judge but Free. it is a great. Is it good? This is a Judge Freeze. We're in the nest. We're we in are. the tree of trust. Yeah. In here. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I did see The Martian. Okay. Great movie. Yeah. Great movie. Okay. Obviously not uh, based on history. Okay. But pretty cool. Okay. Pretty cool movie. We like to watch all those movies that are up for awards. Oh, you're, uh, yeah. you're that person? Well, we like we like. You go movies. to see a movie now, if somebody else says it's good. Now that we have, well, well maybe. You're a follower. That's now that we are. have a kid, <laughs> uh, we do less of the movie watching. Because <laughs> then not only are you going to the theater to pay for the ticket, you're paying for the babysitter too. So going to a movie sure. as an adult couple with children is very expensive if the children Do you are want a home. website? <laughs> do I want a website? <laughs> Just, I mean, la, 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 I, I watch. I watch. There's, there's a certain financial line, mm-hmm. right? There's a certain piece of reality that we all want to say doesn't exist. Yeah, it fucking exists. I can't afford <laughs> to go see every single movie, and I'm too fucking impatient because I'm an American. Yeah, and I want instant gratification right now. Well, I tell you what, I believe in stimulating the economy, and the way that I can do that is by paying other people to do things. Oh, you're such a good person. Yeah, something. We're going to wrap this up so that you're out of here on a hard 8.30. Cool. Thank you for coming back in. Thanks for having me. Truly appreciate you being here, taking the time away from your young one, away from Mr. Frazy. Mm -hmm. What is his first name anyway? Nick. Nick. So when I see Nick, I'm be like, Nick! That's right. Dude, thank you so much for allowing your <laughs> wife. Thank you for, for being so supportive and not giving her a hard time that she's getting drunk with some guy you don't know. <laughs> Which tonight, she wasn't, Nick. Right? I'll tell you, he's... It was all water. The last time I came home was like 11 o'clock, because after the podcast, we, we all s- We talked. sat and talked, right? Yeah. You know, he's not the guy that's like, where were you? Who were you with? No, he was in bed asleep. I like this guy already. <laughs> yeah. He's a realist. He had to deal with the baby. Yeah. Am I going to stay up and freak out about my lady being out? Or no. am I going to get some sleep? Because fuck, I'm going to probably have to get up. Yeah. Because she's going to stay asleep tonight yes. and I'm going to be in my box. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. It's like you know our routine. Right. Yeah. Anyway, I would uh, suggest to anybody who wants to be slightly better person, maybe, I don't know. It's a constant ongoing thing to remind yourself that you're dealing with other people they have a whole life that they're dealing with you're not the center of the universe i would suggest picking up leadership and self-deception and read it don't get the audiobook oh i was gonna say or it, listen well you could listen but if you're somebody like me and you just can't take rainbows getting <laughs> blown up people's asses <laughs> It You know, you can read a book and go, you can put your own kind of feeling to it. Mm-hmm. And you're like, hey, that makes a lot of sense. But when you listen to a book, you have to listen to the author or you have to listen to the voiceover actor who's talking like this. <laughs> and can you really take this for an entire five hours? Oh, my gosh. That's amazing. You should be the <laughs> audiobook reader. Uh, you know what? Which reminds me that'll be a part of our new part of our company if you go to tpsp productions go to tpspproductions.com i don't have the slide up here you can just have to listen to me but go to tpspproductions.com you can see the different things that we're doing there uh we are doing by the way podcasts multiple podcasts we're having comedians come in we have uh jackie live is a new podcast we have some um joshua coburn i'm really excited about that i'm gonna be co-hosting with joshua and my buddy Sai. Uh, we're going to be talking to celebrities, believe it or not. I can't believe it. Truly, one of them is going to be Sly Stallone. He's already in. He already said yes. So no look shit. for that. No shit. Oh, my gosh. No shit. Nice Hold work. on a second. I, th- I had made some notes somewhere. Um, 
badass. But we have some really cool people that are going to be on that show. So please look forward to that. Uh, when you see it, subscribe, like, comment, share. And I hope you're doing all that stuff with this podcast. Share it with your friends and family. Uh, you can follow us on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter, which we don't really do that great of a job, but we're going to really try harder. <laughs> you know, we're really going to try harder. Maybe Marita's going to find you up somebody. With an intern? You know what? It's it. So much of this entrepreneurship, which by the way is really hard to spell. I fuck it up every time. Uh, yeah, that's what autocorrect and stuff is for thank you yeah. thank you for saying that yeah uh is an addiction it's an addiction because when i'm here i want to be more mm -hmm. i want to do more i want to f meet people right yeah when you're at home you're like i want to work i want to be a good father <laughs> i want to have some sex that you know what i'm right. saying but when you're an entrepreneur now, from being into this, I can see why people try and then they fail. But they've tried now. They've been mm -hmm. all in. So they know they've given up everything. Excuse me. So they're going to try again. Right. Another thing. W weren't you just a life coach? What? Yes. Well, now I'm doing this. Oh. But They right. just have so many different hats they wear. Are you going to yeah, wear a lot of those hats? Well... Uh, the primary hat that I wear is jackass hat, <laughs> and I have no qualms about admitting that. Uh, I don't take myself too seriously. I try not to, but, uh, I will be helping with the commercial production of TPSP Productions. Nice. I will be helping, but not totally in charge of the podcasting of TPSP Productions. And Aaron Bunce will be helping with the audiobook leg of TPSP Productions, which we're, we're, we've we've talked about this hostile takeover. We've talked. Did we mention this last time when you were on about being bought so, out? So that came up briefly. It did. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what it really is? No. I want to change the name. I don't really love TPSP Productions. Yeah. I want to get something that makes more sense. So I wanted to create this whole "I'm getting bought out" type thing. Ooh, I like that. Right? It's a good spin. It's a good spin. People yeah. get interested. Really? Someone's buying you out? Well, I just really <laughs> want a new name. So if it's not tpsbproductions.com, in the future, maybe it's TPS Media. So don't be confused. If you type in tpsbproductions.com, you get there and it says TPSP or TPS Media, you're in the right place. You know what I'm thinking though, right? I'm thinking TPS reports. What the, what is that? Is that from Office Space? Yeah. <laughs> PC load letter. What the fuck does that mean? Um, do you have my stapler? And, uh, <laughs> I need my I need my stapler. Is that my stapler? <laughs> <laughs> so when you Google TPS media, hopefully your site pops up instead of Yeah, instead of Office Space. Oh my god. Yeah. All right. Hey, uh Marita. Yo. Is there anything that is coming up for you that you'd like to promote, talk about? So as far as Kazoo, um, I just really want to say if you're hiring new people, there's probably going to be a lot of new grads coming to the region in May. Uh, your employee engagement, a lot of it uh, is directly correlated to how they feel about where they live. Call me up if you want me to get involved with your new hires before they step foot on the job. Give them some guidance on living where you play because when you live where you play, you love where you live. That's what I do. I really want to help you retain your talent that you've spent a lot of money and worked really hard to recruit. Keep me in mind as that season is coming up. We're in the middle of uh, winter career fairs right now recruiting. Um, and then as far as the summer goes, I want to – Apply and pitch at Invest in She, where I could potentially get some sweet, sweet equity free money and turn that into more goodness for Eastern Iowa. I love it. More goodness. More goodness. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Marita, thanks again for coming in tonight. I apologize that Todd had to go off on his national security uh, thing that Would he had to do. Would you say that that prohibited your profits since he's gone? You know, um, there was that, there was, I felt a loss that he wasn't here. You know, um, Patriot Act says 
um, Terrace Todd is. <laughs> this could be in trouble. <laughs> So tonight he's terrorist Todd. Terrorist Todd tonight. Uh, you heard Todd, it here what first. The hell, man. <laughs> what the hell? What the hell, Todd? Hey, <laughs> we're gonna get you out of here. Thank you for uh, hanging out with us tonight. I am Matt, and that is Marita. Yo. And uh, we really appreciate you tuning in. Adios. Good night. Good night.